Life's a funny old thing, isn't it? I've been a really good boy. I don't know whether you noticed in the last few videos, I haven't been ranting and raving or being a nutter or talking about COVID or taking the knee or any of that load of old crap. Um, and I thought that's probably the best way to go, but it seems not. I've had quite a few requests this week because we've been doing things a little bit differently. So well, we want the rants and the raves. So um, here's a video dedicated to ranting and raving. <laughs> Happy Saturdays everyone, it's actually quite a nice day on the marina, it's just clouded over a little bit, but take a little look at this, it's absolutely splendid I'd say. If I've got everything correct, according to the Twitterati and the Wokerati, me, Paulus the Wood Gnome, I'm a racist, I'm homophobic, I'm gynophobic, whatever the hell that is, I'm panphobic, whatever that is, um, I can't admit there's more than two genders, um, I'm a racist because I won't take the knee, I'm gammon, and um, I'm a Covid denier, I want to kill my granny, and uh, what else is it? Oh, and because I don't agree with them, I'm a far right thug. Who'd have thought it, eh? <laughs> well, I suppose before I go into this, I should make you all dizzy. No, that's not what I meant, really. Yeah, before I go into this, I should warn you all that this is going to be a run. And if you're a little bit um, of a snowflake or a little bit easily offended or just don't like me going on about nothing or outrageousness, I'll turn off. OK, don't watch this one. But I'm going to go for it on this one because you asked for it. So don't blame me. Right, before I go off on one, I suppose I'd better acknowledge that this is YouTube and I have to be a little bit careful with what I say and what language I use. <laughs> I'll tell you that we have to worry about things like that these days is ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, so I haven't monetized this video. I've turned monetization off, so if you get any adverts, then that's really bad and that kind of proves what I've been saying is that YouTube are going to start putting adverts over people's channels who aren't even monetized, which I think is ridiculous. They all want you to pay for this YouTube red, you know. That's another thing I could moan about. So anyway, shall we begin? Believe it or not, I'm not actually going to start off with the old Kung Flu. I'm actually going to start off with that gobshite Gareth Southgate and all his subservient players taking the knee, which I believe all this nonsense has driven race relations back into something akin to the 1970s. So shall we begin? According to Mr Southgate, we all need educating because he says that the England players are not taking the knee for Black Lives Matters, the BLM movement. Well, Mr Southgate, it's you that needs educating because all your players wore Black Lives Matter on the back of their shirts. Sky TV had a little Black Lives Matter banner on every single game uh, last season that they televised. And also all around the ground, there were Black Lives Matter banners. And also, do you remember the guy from Bradford who had a plane fly over saying White Lives Matter, who lost his job and got hounded by everyone? And you wonder why the England fans are booing at your players taking the knee. You're an idiot, Mr Southgate. You need educating. It's, a, it's tokenism at best, 
and it does absolutely nothing for race relations. Now by all accounts, because I don't agree with Mr Southgate, that makes me racist. That, can you not see the problem? Can you not see the problem? Right, let's get something straight right from the outset here. I absolutely hate racists. And I mean racists, proper racists, not this la lazy label that gets thrown around just because you don't agree with someone of colour. Is that how I'm supposed to say it now? I don't even know how I'm supposed to use the, the pronouns now or what, you know, how to identify anything anymore. That's how fucked up we've become. Uh, and that, that's really quite sad. Yeah, I've always judged people on who they are, how they act, how they behave, how they are with me, what they do with their lives. Not what bloody colour they are, that's just nonsense. So no, I, you know, I do remember it in the 70s. I remember growing up with a bit of racism and I didn't like it then, I stayed out of it. I'm a Mick or a Paddy or whatever. I got a little bit of stick being called Thick Mick because my mum's Irish. Um, but, and yeah, that didn't particularly bother me, but you know, some people it will bother. So yeah, I hate the lazy label. And uh, yes, you can dislike people that are a different colour to you. That does not make you racist. I absolutely adore Frank Bruno. I know that might be a strange one, but I loved Frank Bruno when I was growing up. Um, I loved Mike Tyson. I was a little bit into boxing in them days. But I absolutely hate people like Diane Abbott, Lammy, Dawn Butler. They're all race baiters. They're as bad as racists. So yeah, so Mr Southgate, don't be telling me because I'm going to boo at England taking the knee that I'm a racist. I'm not. I think it's divisive. I think you've done the wrong thing. I think you've dug yourself into a hole that you can't get out of. And it seems your pride over this is more important than the message that's being told. I would be quite happy for the players to link arms. I don't see what was wrong with kick racism out. I don't know why you have to get on your knees for uh, a thug in America who basically held a pistol to a pregnant lady's stomach and yeah, he unfortunately got killed. But he was crazed, he was on drugs. I mean, that's no excuse, but you know, see I'm feeling that I'm even have to walk around this carefully. And that's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. As I say, I don't like seeing footballers being subservient and getting down on their knees. I didn't like seeing the police get down on their knees. Um, I didn't like to see the two-tier policing that went on during those BLM riots. I don't like seeing what went on in America with BLM. It's, it's just nonsense and stop it. Just get up off your bloody knees, stand up, stand proud, sing your national anthem and get on with playing football and stop virtue signaling to me. We don't need politics in football. If you want to fight racism, do it in society, educate people, not at football. Enough of that. And this next one, I don't know whether to laugh or not at, I'll take anything about this seriously at all. First of all, I'd like to say, look, there are two sexes. You've either got a penis or you've got a lady pocket. It really is as simple as that. Um, that's what the science tells us. Remember, we've always got to follow the science. Anyway, I heard a new term this week, gynophobic. Yes, gynophobic, what a strange word. Apparently, if I've got this right, what it means is, let's say for a moment that I decided to um, become a lady, right? But I wouldn't have sex with a lady, a proper lady with a la la, then that would make me gynophobic because I'm worried about what she has or he has between his legs. Seriously, that's a thing. So I don't know where that's come from. But this whole cis, gender neutral, all this lot, let me just tell you, all right, my opinion on it, my absolute frank and honest opinion on it, fuck off. What a load of old nonsense, seriously. What a load of old cock. Oh, and there's another one I forgot, panphobic. I think that's if you don't like pans. I'm not really sure. Now, apparently what panphobic is, is if you disagree with anyone that thinks you should be able to be well, it's bisexual-ish sort of thing but I think it means you, that you don't agree with bisexualism and people who identify as pigeons and stuff you know what I mean men who identify as girls one day and now that and the next day yeah you're panphobist how bizarre there's a lot of weird phobias going on at the moment isn't there and ists and all that sort of nonsense I honestly don't know what to say and of course it's July or June sorry so that means we're in Gay Pride Month, where we have a whole month of people running around in their underpants and with dildos off their heads and all this sort of stuff, running around Brighton and the likes, thinking that's an amazing thing to do. 
and of course we've got football again we'll be um, going on and on and on about it now again let's just get one thing straight I don't care what you do with your pork sword or your front lady pocket you do what you like but I you know I don't need it shoved down my throat for a whole month sure I agree that everyone has to be equal but that's the word equal can we have a month of heterosexual pride please of course it's also a month where all these uh, big corporations change their logos into rainbows and um, is it only me who finds that a little bit creepy but the gay, gay, um, the gay community or whatever um, have taken on a child symbol which is a rainbow maybe that's just me maybe I'm being a bit over critical there but anyway yeah all these corporations are using the rainbow flag and I actually looked at BMW which was quite strange so BMW the background to their logo now has a rainbow except in the Middle East except in those places where homophobia actually really does exist I do wonder why all these activists don't actually go over to the Middle East and complain about it at source where there is that massive problem or maybe they don't want to be thrown off buildings or killed hung um, again, let's go back to the footballers. They do all this virtue signaling, yet they're going to play the World Cup in a couple of years in Qatar. Which, uh, yeah, if you're a homosexual, you get hung or thrown off a building. Strange, isn't it? Strange old world. They like to um, virtue signal to all the, you know, they're signaling to the already converted. I'm not a converted gay, but you know what I mean. I'm quite happy for people to do what they want. As I've always said, do what you like, but don't enforce me to do the same thing. Simples, bye. And of course, all roads lead back to COVID, the old Kung flu. Yeah, that massive pandemic that's killing everyone, not. Anyway, we're gonna do this in a few different sections because um, there's a lot to cover here. And first of all, we're gonna cover the old face nappy. I actually saw a really good tweet a couple of weeks ago and what it said, is while the men of our country stand there in their face nappies their children and grandchildren are having their liberties taken away from them I absolutely 100% agree with that one so it's a bit of a subject I'm a little bit torn on really um, well not torn I think if you're wearing a nappy you're a gobshite um, but I do understand why some people do it now I have I've had a conversation with Derek over this my old mate on snug one and he's absolutely adamant that you're a coward and a twat and everything if you're wearing a face mask and while I partly agree I also do understand that people don't want confrontation so I do wonder what percentage of people wear face masks that um, actually don't want to wear them and are only really wearing them because they're afraid of any confrontation basically they're complying and I, this is where I agree with Derek is your the, the key word is you're complying and you're giving them more giving the governments around the world more movement and they're seeing that you're complying and they're pushing more upon us do you not remember do you not remember three weeks to flatten the curve three weeks to save the NHS have your jab the over 70s and then we can all be free again no let's change the goalpost now it's anyone 50 and above have to have had the jab then you get all your freedoms back oh and then it changed again now it's over 25s by all accounts and never guess what at this point we're supposed to be coming out of complete lockdown on the 21st of june you're not have you not learned this yet you're not you're not coming out for you're not getting your freedoms back until at least the 19th of July that's what I believe it's going to be delayed a month at least and then we're getting into early flu season where suddenly those flu figures will then be COVID figures again and um, you'll all be locked down again so um, yeah as we said compliance you see now there may be a few of you spitting feathers at me right now saying oh what's the problem with wearing a face mask you know why can't you do that for 10 minutes while you're in a store or whatever well I'll tell you what I never will wear a face mask I will never put a nappy on my face because it's it's control that's the way I see it. it is absolute pure and utter control if you think that face mask is doing anything at all then I'm sorry you're absolutely deluded that's my opinion well, it's not even my opinion that's scientific fact go and have a read of the Dan Mars study if you haven't read that and you're coming back at me saying oh you should just wear a face mask no seriously go and read the Dan Mask study then go and have a look what Boris Johnson Matt Hancock and all that lot said a few days before face masks were implemented they said they do nothing and have a guess what so did the World Health Organization suddenly they all changed their tune funny how science changed wasn't it and now we come to the hypocrisy part which is actually my favorite part 
I don't know whether you've all been watching the uh, old G7 things going on in Cornwall, which in itself is a load of old cock, where a load of rich people, a load of the elite, get together, all coming on their private jets, all going on about being green, of course, as well. Yeah, they come in in their private jets. They don't have to self-isolate. They don't have to quarantine. Um, on video or on the news, it shows them all sitting a couple of metres apart with their muzzles on. And then you, when you look at the photos on Twitter and uh, other social networks, you see they're not wearing their face masks. They're all cuddling each other. They're all partying, man. They're all partying. It's absolutely ridiculous. And you see the same at football. You see football players um, sitting, you know, when they're substitutes with these face masks on. Yet when they're on the pitch, they all go out and they're hugging each other, no face masks on, all that. Can you not see the hypocrisy in this? Can you not see the double standards? Also, it's quite funny. Again, Derek sent me a video, I think it was yesterday. I think, uh, and I think it originally came off um, Instagram. And it was a guy in his face muzzle, swimming, in a face muzzle. And then he'd pull it away to take a breath, put it back on and swim underwater. And then we have people in their cars with the muzzle on. I've gone back to muzzles again. The people's in the cars on their own, driving around with the muzzle on. We have people walking the dales with face muzzles on. What the hell has happened to people? Are people really that scared? I absolutely cannot fathom it. It's, I don't even know what to say about it. And talking of hypocrisy, I don't know whether you heard this week. This is this is the UK, by the way. Um, the NHS has now said that it's going to change the way it shows the um, COVID deaths by actually really reporting who died of COVID or who was actually sick with COVID at the time they died. And uh, of course, that means the figures of deaths would absolutely come down. I wonder why they're going to do that. Could it be anything to do with saying, oh, look how well the jab has worked? That one that's experimental, and it's experimental, I think, till 2020, the end of 2022, I believe. And this is why you're not coming out of lockdown, because uh, the jab was only given approval as an emergency, in, in, as in an emergency. It's the only way it could get approval. So state of emergency, and this is how they all got pushed through. And yet I'm reading quite a lot of disturbing figures about how many people have died. And worldwide it seems to be over 3,000 people have died. Now that SARS-2 um, vaccine they brought out killed 53 people and then they pulled it. So what's different about this? That's worrying. That is worrying. Another thing I read, and I did actually see the official figures for this, I did actually see it come from UNICEF. Because sometimes when you see these tweets and things on social media you're not sure whether to believe them or not. Things are so messed up you don't actually know what to believe anymore. So I actually did look it up and UNICEF have come out and they've estimated that 1.2 million children will have died as a result of lockdowns. Now let me say that again, 1.2 million children have potentially died or they, they say they have died, that's the estimate, due to lockdowns. So you got to, what you've got to remember is these children were absolutely zero risk of dying from COVID. Pretty much zero, but it might have been 0.0000001, something like that. Absolutely no risk. And yet they're suffering for people. Let's remember the, the average death rate of people with COVID-19 who die of COVID, not all this bullshit made up figures, the ones who die of COVID, the average age is just over 82, which is actually above the age, average age of death. So why did these children have to suffer for it? And I'll tell you what, seeing children in face masks absolutely breaks my heart. Uh, I'm being serious now, it really, it really does break my heart. Um, I make sure little Connor doesn't see, would never see me in a face mask. Not that I'd wear one anyway, but I don't want that poor child to be going through all this. And this it sort of brings me back to that tweet that I was talking about where they were saying, you know, well, men are wearing their face nappies, their children are having their liberties taken away from. That's why I agree with it. I don't want this. And it is for a, for a non-virus. I'm telling you, I am a COVID denier. I'm saying, well, there is COVID-19 because COVID is basically the flu. It is, a, I believe, it's an absolute strain of flu. It may be more um, transmittable, but um, nothing adds up. The death figures don't add up. Why couldn't they just be death figures from COVID, not died with COVID? Because if you've got a cold, you've died with COVID. Simple as that. Bye. I suppose the question is, is how do we stop all this nonsense? And the only thing I can suggest is you stop complying. Absolutely stop complying. Right now, it ends. It ends when the people want to end it. Uh, it really is simple as that. Now, if you're still someone who's scared about it, what I suggest is you actually stop reading things like The Guardian and stop sending me links from there 
that tell me bullshit go and have a look on the official websites like the ONS go and have a look through history what the World Health Organization has said go and have a look what SAGE has said in the past and then tell me if you think it still all adds up also what you really need to remember is the people that are running our lives at the moment which is WHO and SAGE and Public Health England um, tell me forget Public Health in England because, well no they're unelected as well but WHO the UN the economic for World Economic Forum all of these are unelected people you never voted for them you never put them in power they're actually private companies so they're private individuals now you tell me how the world has got to a place where we're being dictated to by un completely unelected people basically being um, dictated to by corporations because that's what's happened that's where we are so only you can do something about it um, I know it's easy to say just ignore lockdowns because you can't I lost my businesses as you know so did my wife and um, so we can't just carry on but we can say no we can stop complying we can take off our face masks we can walk with our heads held high and we can try and educate people and when people come up to you saying about you're spreading a disease ask them how ask them where the science is ask them if they've read the Denmark study ask them if they know anything about the Great Barrington Declaration ask them if they know about um, what's it called um, Nuremberg 2 which may be going through maybe I should touch on that so what is Nuremberg 2 well you know I'm sure many of you know what the Nuremberg trials are about as a crimes against humanity after World War 2 and it set a code up saying that people can't be co things like you know you can't be coerced into taking vaccines and things like that uh, lots of other things but um, Nuremberg 2 there's a I think last count and I say last that I read was over a thousand scientists and tens of thousands of health professionals are trying to take the leaders of the world basically to court over crimes against humanity and I got banned from Facebook again so I've got another 30 day ban I didn't actually even know about it because I hardly ever go on there but yeah I'm banned from Facebook again and what it was there was a post up there about the Nuremberg trials and I basically all I put and I'm going to put the tweet uh, the, the thing up beneath me now basically all I was saying is Facebook are complicit with all this because they've obviously been pushing the COVID narrative and I hope they all hang from the gallows and then the funny thing is yeah they banned me I didn't know I was I think I went on Facebook to post something on Hannah the Narrowboat and I couldn't and um, it, it obviously I had to go and look why and then it said I tried to say well no I don't agree with that decision and then I got back once saying well they're not going to look into it because of Covid <laughs> you couldn't make this shit up honestly you couldn't make it up I, um, I don't really care about Facebook that's me done with Facebook so no there'll be nothing from me posted up on Hannah the Narrowboat on Facebook I am now permanently on MeWe I'm not even going to bother looking at Facebook anymore okay so you all know now bye well I think that's about the end of me rants and raves for today if you're still with me fair play to you you're either mentally ill because you hate me and you've carried on watching or you actually um have taken on board a few of my points I'm not asking anyone to agree with me really I'm just pointing out how I feel and some of the hypocrisy I see in the world at the moment but um, I suppose we'll end on some news actually Hannah the narrowboat is going into the doctors on Monday have all the steel work done under the back decks so having all that all that all sorted out you've heard me talking about that before so it's probably gonna be in for three or four days I would have thought so yeah um, I'll probably do next week's vlogs as we go I might even do a couple of live streams in the evening showing you the progress because yes yeah, quite a big old job so um, we'll see what next week brings really but I don't I think we'll just carry on as we've done this week sort of thing except there'll be more vloggy um, and probably we do do two or three next week so um, I'll see you soon I hope you don't hate me bye <laughs>